try to invoke your deeply rooted, loving, friendly attitude, friendly thoughts, by deliberately relaxing the body, relaxing the mind. When the body and mind relax, in that relaxed state, the hidden potential of loving friendliness grows. When we tensed up and rigid, friendliness does not grow. And therefore, try to relax. Also, when we understand our impulsive actions and slow down, that too helps us to, to, to evoke our friendliness. Because when we are patient, we learn also to be considerate, take time to think of our inner urges, inner feelings, and we go deep into our own subconscious mind. And we begin to see the way how peace grows in us with patience, compassion and friendliness. Each and every aspect of these wonderful emotions support our practice. We are here for this wonderful training, training our mind, training our body, training ourselves in discipline. Discipline doesn't mean following rules and regulations. Discipline is patiently watching unnecessary impulsive actions and learn out of that how unprofitable they are, how profitable the discipline is. We learn to slow down when we discipline ourselves. When we slow down, we not only can see details of our activities, but also we soothe our nerves. We beg the, the slow movement, slow activity is a cooling balm for our nerves. More fast we move, quicker our activities, harder on our nerves. is very practical, physiological training. Discipline is not only thinking, but even physiological training to calm our nerves, soothe our senses, 
make the mind peaceful. Undisciplined mind is reckless, nervous, agitated, excited. Calmness and peace won't grow there. Meditation itself is a method or system of calming, soothing our nerves, and that is a discipline. Meditation itself is a discipline. When we are calm and peaceful, that is where loving friendliness grows, concentration arises. You have faulty heard that when the joy and happiness combine together, mind and body become serene and peaceful, calm, ending in concentration. Happiness arises from discipline, joy arises from discipline, compassion arises from discipline, we can see the benefits of discipline only when we pay attention to our activities, our senses, and see how beneficial they are. It's not the length of time, the duration we spent on cushion, but what we do on the cushion. It's not just sitting, but training ourselves to make us calm and peaceful. From that we gain concentration which shows us, lights up the way to see the reality. When we see the reality, we become even wiser, more insightful to deal with our own affairs in our life. This training is not limited to cushion, but it affects our entire personality, our day-to-day -day life. What we learn on the cushion, in a quiet situation, is more effective in our daily life. This discipline sinks into our mind. And therefore, to make our life peaceful and happy out of the meditation cushion, we must make the best use of our time on the cushion. Train our thoughts, train our mind, train the body in a special way. That training is called meditation or bhavana. Bhavana just 
means a discipline, training. We train ourselves from all directions, from every perspective. Gaining concentration deepens our insight to see the life as it is, to handle life's problems as they are. So this, this training has far-reaching effects. Every tiny little thing we do, with patience, with compassion, mindfulness, concentration, insight, helps to make life overall happy and peaceful. We charge the peace all over our body and mind. We make the mind peaceful, body peaceful, and that helps the life, life's quality. We make the qualitative life by training ourselves, cultivating our mind, Mind is the source of quality life. If the mind is not steady, sound, clear, the life is not qualitative life. We can see both tranquility meditation and insight meditation combined together to make the life a quality life. Tranquility meditation calms the mind and body, soothes our nerves, makes us healthy, prevent from all kind of unnecessary things from happening to us. Insight meditation joins this in showing the right directions insight into our life and have a balanced, equanimous state. Equanimity supports insight, insight supports equanimity, tranquility supports insight and tranquility, insight and equanimity, all support to make qualitative life, peaceful life, life that can relate to each other and to oneself. And also we begin to see how much we can contribute to the peace and happiness of others when we discipline ourselves. With these thoughts, we continue our practice. 
these are thoughts supporting our practice. They are not something alien to our meditation. These also are part of our meditation, essential part. When we have a question why we meditate, these are the answers, part of the answers. In addition to liberating ourselves totally from all defilements, we also have to live this life peacefully, liberating ourselves from all defilements is a long way to go, but we have to live this life handling our day-to-day -day affairs, meeting people, living with them, and meditation covers all these areas here and now, and then after this. So, friends, have confidence in your own discipline, your own training, have confidence in the method the source of this method, and have confidence of those who have followed this method and achieved the final goal. We all are treading that path, and we all can be successful in achieving this goal. We all want to be spiritually successful. In addition to our whatever material success we have, when we combine these two material success with the spiritual success, our life would be perfect. Material success perhaps may not be so great to bring peace, but even without material success, if we have spiritual success, we can be peaceful. And therefore, have confidence in your spiritual training, spiritual practice. Relax the body, relax the mind. Make the body and mind calm and peaceful. Let go of any kind of resentment, anger, jealousy, fear that might trouble your mind. Don't make things hard for you, hard for others. Don't have hard feeling for anyone. Everybody is in that person's state of mental development spiritual development. We are not hundred percent equal in spiritual training, spiritual achievement. We are not equal in any way according to our karma. We are different, and yet within this differences, this diversity, we can find unity, 
in the way we practice, in the method we practice, and in gaining patience, compassion, friendliness, equanimity, concentration, joy, happiness. In this we are all one, because we all want to achieve the same goal. As far as goal is concerned, we all are one. But otherwise we have differences. Accepting, accommodating, being very compassionate with people, with all kinds of differences, is a wonderful way of handling any difficult moment, difficult situation. Try to understand we are different, different persons have different mentality, different attitude, different achievements, and therefore we try to accommodate those differences, high or low, doesn't matter. So with this confidence, with this wonderful attitude of friendliness, this emotion, altruistic emotion of compassion, balanced state of mind or equanimity, let us proceed with our practice. We practice slowly and gradually to make our practice bring perfect results. And please don't accept, expect everyone to be like you. Everyone cannot be like you. Don't expect everybody to be like you. It never happens, but it is easy for us to understand, forgive, and forget their trespassing, forgive their mistakes, and easy to forgive ourselves for our mistakes and proceed with the practice. If you don't forgive yourself and harsh on you for being intolerant, for having temper, for being jealous, for being unsuccessful, then you are harsh on yourself. When you are harsh on yourself, it is very much likely that you will be harsh on others. And therefore, try to be friendly with yourself, gentle and kind to yourself, and with this, from the same place, same position, you can be gentle and kind towards others.
If you are unfriendly with yourself, you can never be friendly with others. If you say, I forget myself to help others, you are not doing justice to yourself. You eventually hurt others because you don't come from the feeling of friendliness. Perhaps you may be mechanical, and therefore it is most effective if we are friendly with ourselves, and from that place we start helping others. That works. We won't hurt anybody. So please try to be gentle, kind to yourself for the past mistakes, for the past shortcomings under unmindful situations. And forgive others for their shortcomings that they committed when they were unmindful. Unmindfulness is the path to death. Mindfulness is the path to deathlessness. The Buddha said, the mindful never dies, the unmindful is dead already. This we have to remember. If we remain mindful, if you remain mindful, nothing in the world can make you unhappy. Nobody can make you, can disturb you. So remain to be mindful, patient, accommodating, understanding, and be gentle and kind to yourself and gentle and kind to others. Rejoice in your success, rejoice in others' success. Always try to be patient. If somebody repeatedly does something which disturbs you, you, be, you should be more compassionate towards that person. That person also is here to receive our love, to receive our compassion, and to get healed that person's own inner conflicts, inner difficulties. No one is here to hurt anybody, disturb anybody deliberately. Everybody is here to gain some peace, happiness, to open their heart and mind to spiritual training, spiritual healing, It is very easy to be impatient and unkind to someone who disturbs you. But please try not to get disturbed. Always let your heart melt at the person's shortcomings, which may disturb you. And they all are very sincere. You all are very sincere, very honest. No one came here just to spend the time. 
everybody came here with a wonderful, wholesome, honest, sincere attitude, sincere feeling to enhance one's own peace and happiness and to enhance the peace and happiness of others. Everyone wants to cooperate and friendly with each other in order to promote one's own peace and the peace of others. With this attitude, we continue our practice. May you all be happy, may you all be peaceful, may the mind be filled with serene, calm, peaceful blessing, blessing of peace, blessing of calmness, serenity. May you all be blessed with wisdom, understanding, be able to relax your mind and body, and may you all be able to be very friendly with yourself, and may your heart open to your own friendliness, open your heart to accommodate, accept the friendliness of others, share your own deep inner sincere, honest, serene feeling with others, and accept their honest, deep, sincere, serene, compassionate feeling. Focus on this feeling for your further development of concentration. And I hope you all gain Jhana, Jhani, absorption, concentration. May peace prevail you. May you all be peaceful. May you all be calm. May all of you be relaxed.